Hey everyone, I'm Tom Thornton with Hedge Fund Telemetry and welcome to our bi-monthly short interest data review with Jeff Garbaz of Quantitative Partners and Erlinger Research. And uh, boy, it's been uh, quite the week and year so far in the markets and the short interest data and the put call data that we're gonna go over uh, has really been you know, very fascinating. And um, I think um, um, something that I think we can use, especially when we start to see some squeezes. Now, Jeff, why don't you go through the um, type classifications that Erlanger has? Yeah, sure. Up? So we basically have um, four categories and not all stocks fit into these four categories. So maybe on any given day, 40% of our stocks are in these four criteria. Um, the ones and twos are stocks that are strong technically. Uh, and what we do is we, we have a technical rank that looks at how stocks are doing over the last 100 trading days and ranks them from 10% to 100%. And so if a stock is really outperforming the uh, S&P, it's gonna have a rank of 100. And if it's really underperforming, it's gonna have a rank of a 10. And if it's uh, flat against the S&P, it's gonna be a rank of, uh, of 50. And so we look over the last 100 days. And then the other thing that we do on the, of the ones and twos is we look to determine how high or low the short selling is by looking at the range of the short ratio historically over time. And so, uh, a range of one stock might be from one to three. And if it was at three, we'd say the short intensity was 100%. Another stock, the range might be from four to 10. And if it was at, uh, at four, we'd say it was at you know, a rank of 0%. So by being able to look at the range, that lets us see um, what's going on. And combining with the tech rank, then we can say it's either a type one, a short squeeze, or it's a type two, it's doing well, but no one's short. And then the threes and fours are stocks that are struggling technically. And a three is a stock that has a high short intensity level to it. And a type four is one that has no one short. And, and that's been the, uh, the best thing to be short in this market so far this year have been long squeezes, stocks that are weak uh, technically and no one is, uh, is short. And so as people go to sell, there's no shorts covering, causing support. And they just continue to drop and drop and drop great example that we've talked about on this this call time and again has been tesla tesla is now a long squeeze there's basically no one uh short the the, uh, the stock so that's those are the four categories and out of those categories we can uh we can learn a lot okay i am going to start with so we just got a fresh read of uh of short interest and what's going on is um it went through the end of February. So the settlement date was the 28th, but the trade date was the 24th. So it went through the 11th through the uh, the 24th of uh, February. And the New York Stock Exchange fell 24 basis points and NASDAQ went up by 45 basis points. So we're still in a period where there's a lot of um, uh, shorting that's been going on over the last year. Um, we're in the mid 20s on NASDAQ and we're approaching 20% on New York Stock Exchange since uh, February of, of last year. The one, the one thing that's absolutely incredible, and we'll look at a chart too in a second, but energy, um, the shorts kind of refuse to capitulate. And Tom, I've never seen an average technical rank on a sector at 90%. That's where, that's where it is right now. That's where energy is right now. The average tech rank is ninety percent. I've never seen it that a sector ever that high. So, Jeff, one thing I I think might have happened is that last spike up could have seen some of the shorts uh, capitulate on that last spike. I mean, maybe it's the nickel trader in China. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we'll a, to... I mean, that's that's why this next data will be interesting to uh to see what that looks like and then down below uh the major etfs there's really no change um it's just kind of very average short interest and and the mid cap is actually now above 60 what is it 61 percent? so it's a little bit higher there's been kind of shorts adding to that um in terms of um sectors the largest increases came i'm, I'm surprised by this materials people shorted material stocks which to me doesn't make much sense with uh gold acting really, really strong, um, food, beverage, and tobacco, and, and pharmaceuticals. I'd love to see like the pharma and the biotech 
uh, group, which is inside of pharma, start to get a lot of short selling because it's been it's been horrible for most of last year. It was it was the underperformer, and if the shorts stay around too long, that could get interesting if we put some of this some of these issues we're having right now behind us. And uh, surprising that we we had a drop in consumer services um, because now obviously what's going on with the increase in gas prices, those stocks are starting to get hit. And, uh, and then media and then commercial services were the other places where we saw um, a bit of an addition. So we kind of focused on materials. And if you scroll down, this is kind of a fun thing to see. There are a lot of groups, uh, a lot of names in materials that have heavy short selling and a fair number of them that are, that are short squeezes. So this is sorted by the uh, short intensity and it runs you know, over, over two pages right now. So that, that, that's kind of an interesting thing. How do, uh, how do materials kind of look from your perspective, Tom? Well, everything just looks like, like it's, uh, you know, ready to fall off the map and some things have come down. Yeah. Uh, I was yeah. looking in the Erlinger chart room uh, this morning. I saw Mosaic as one and we can look at that one. Also in biotech, I saw Amgen had a really big spike in short interest um, on this report. So let's keep going. Yeah, um, to that uh, on Amgen, we put in our weekly type screen Regeneron, which is had a really strong week. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second, like how we did the screen this week, because uh, I think that's important for positioning for people when they come into a week. Um, you can see here is like what I'm talking about. Here's the the New York Stock Exchange. You know, these are just years. So you can see how that's been climbing in the last year. And then here's NASDAQ, which I mentioned. NASDAQ is, is ballistic. I mean, that, that, that's 21 right there. Now we're into 22. And you can see people are really putting the shorts on the uh, the NASDAQ stocks right now. But so, so Jeff, just go back to that NASDAQ real quick. So they were short, mega short going into 2008. And where were they covering are they covering on the way down? I mean, is this, a, is this an indicator that we can say has fuel for a squeeze or is this something that the shorts are going to be right? Well, um, they may be right. So far, we haven't seen that in our ECOS, the earlier commitment of short sellers. We haven't seen that yet show up. We only have like five or six sectors. I'd love to see like smart short sellers start to sh show up in some of the tech stuff. But this was just a good example. Like they covered into the weakness and the market couldn't rally off of that as we obviously know what happened in 07 through 09 and then as we got into the beginning of 09 there was no one really left short and that made the first quarter horrific before we hit the bottom on uh on 39 of 09 you know like right. that, that january february is so destructive because there was no one left short all these people had covered that way down yeah. one thing um I mean, going back into 2008, I remember my data went off the charts in uh, November 08. And I just, I had breath readings that were just unheard of and this stuff, the short interest was nuts. And the Qs actually made a low, their low in November. Yeah. And then the you low. had the, you know, then you had the banks and the big banks and everything else, you know, fall apart. Um, so that's kind of something I'm, I'm watching. And it would be interesting to see where the shorts are. I know we don't have shorts in the large mega cap names, uh, not yet at least. And there's been a lot of shorts in some of the garbagey tech names that, that lifted over the last two years. Yeah, this is the last thing to look at, which is, goes along with what you're saying. These are the ones and the threes. So ones are short squeezes, three shorts are making money. You can see that's now over a thousand. And the type three count has been rising a little bit. And then the short squeezes actually rose this last period. Um, it's interesting, end of, end of January, 19% of our universe, which is like roughly 5,400 stocks were higher. And that number actually did increase in February up to 28. We're still in bad shape. We're, we're still kind of struggling. But, um, and then you can see down here, here's the absolute number of shares, sh our, our market average short rank, which combines everything together. You can see from that low point in 2020, it's, people have just been adding, 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 adding. And now we're getting up to average to maybe a little bit above average for the entire um, market. So there, there is going to be some fuel if and when 
um, you know, we get some resolutions on these things and some covering does start, but so far any, any covering has been basically it's lasted like a day and that's, you know, that's kind of, kind of it for what we've been getting. Um, okay. So here, I'm going to go into, uh, chart room. You should be seeing chart room now, right? Yep. Got it. Okay. Um, so first of all, let's just go take a look. We're going to go to Erlanger scans, come down here and look. At go up to the one and twos. We're going to do the sector. First, we're just going to look at the uh, overall. Um, what is interesting is the tech ranks are improving uh, somewhat on on these sectors. Energy, obviously, as I said, ninety. Utilities, uh, materials, food staples, real estate, banks, and diversified financials are actually improving as well. Um, you can see the one week change was from twenty two to thirteen on a sector basis. So there's there's some improvement. Um, that's going on there. And then all these are the sectors that are really struggling. Um, it's interesting, like retail is pretty heavily shorted now, autos, consumer durables, and then um, up here in the buy category, food staple retailing. Um, it's interesting that people are going in there to, to kind of short those. And we can see that like, we've only got four sectors above 50% right now, but a lot that are 45, to like the 50 level. So those are all average to slightly above average. And uh, the one thing that has happened since is we've lost um, a lot of extremeness in the sector option rank. We're at nine sectors that have a rank above 70. And a week ago we were at um, nine as well. Before that we we're at 15. So that's kind of played itself out. I'm not seeing as many put squeezes right so now. In the so work. For new people, um, when you see that green um, over seventy percent, and and we've seen it go, it can go up to a hundred percent. That means there's excess uh, put activity, and you can use that in a way similar to the way you see something that's overly shorted. And that's been really my go-to uh, in the last year since option activity's been so heavy. Yeah, I mean, you look can, at you, you can, can pull, up, uh, pull up JP Morgan. That I, that one was. Um, but before I go to JP Morgan, just real quickly, you okay, can see sorry. the sectors. We got it up to 22 at the January low. And then we had like a 6% move in a couple of days. And then we kind of ride a little bit at the end of February, but not as high. And then we had, boom, a little pop. And now we're kind of working our way down here. But to Tom's point, you know, if you look at from March onward, we've, we've had back and forth. And if you look at, that was the uh, pandemic. And then it fell off the cliff and we had nothing for like almost a year in terms of getting a situation where the market corrected and put activity got high. I mean, so, when we did, when we did um, a webinar around the pandemic and we're all locked in our houses, uh, we talked about just that heavy put activity and we knew that there was gonna be uh, the potential for something to explode. So I was looking at JP Morgan and it's a type four, which basically means people are not short but I'm seeing excess put activity here at a hundred percent. So once it gets in, so, so you're not going to play it. If you're going to go long it, you wouldn't go long it for a, sh a short squeeze, but you could go long it for a put squeeze, i.e. let's just make it bigger for people to see. So basically the stock um, fell, put activity got extreme. People are betting more downside and now it's working its way into the DMA channel. And you can see other times historically, at this low, we got the green dots. We got a put squeeze. You can see here at this low, we got a put squeeze and it moved through the DMA channel. We got it here. We got it in here. We got it there. We got it there. Um, this one, not really. The put guys got it right. It was kind of just dropping and continuing to drop. We didn't get that move through the DMA channel. But uh, yeah, this could be a good play. This could be a good play on the uh, on the long side. Um, I also like this one. Wells Fargo too is is almost yeah. the same chart, you know, right now, um, as well. Yeah, I, I I think that this is a group that I'm starting to watch for some oversold conditions. Um, yeah, and, it, it certainly looks like you know death out there, and uh, you know, oh, yeah. more I'm being very patient uh, looking at you know before I buy any financials. And this week we did something kind of interesting. I'll just talk about this for a second. So we put out a screen every week of our favorite short squeezes and our favorite long squeezes. And on Monday morning, 
Um, it was such an ugly open that I was like, I can't, I can't put shorts on right now with longs because if we get a rebound, the short side's going to kill me. So I waited for Monday and Tuesday. And then Wednesday morning, we obviously got the big pop. And at 10 o'clock, we kind of came out with our screen for the week. And it's, it's been a really good week. Um, just to explain the logic a little bit of what we did. You can see here. Uh, so we had, I had two utilities. Um, and then I, yeah, so we had Southern and then NRG. And then we went with an insurance, uh, food staples, Costco, Regeneron, which I, which I mentioned, Snap-on tools and Sanderson Farm. So kind of pretty defensive, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, been, it's been working. This Regeneron has been, I mean, look at the nice bounce we've had the last couple of days on, on Regeneron. And it also had high put activity. So that was kind of a, uh, a nice setup. And then on the long side, I mean, on the long squeeze side. Um, look at Proctor. Oof. Proctor Gamble has been a struggle. And, you know, like my thought was we're, we're pretty, we're pretty over, overdone on the downside. And um, if we're going to get some type of bounce, I'd rather be in these type of names, you know, like PPG, Salonese, obviously with oil prices going higher, uh, win with, um, you know, potentially people not traveling, semiconductors look weak, um, Axon, Enterprise, you know, Aerospace and Defense kind of struggling a little bit. And then the Procter & Gamble, you know. So it's been a good week for the screen, I click, think. Click, uh, on, uh, pro click on Procter. Yeah. I mean, it's got the high put activity, but it's well below um, its DMA channel. Um, I was just talking to someone who's a big holder of Procter & Gamble. And it's kind of like, I think you're okay until if we break 140. And then you you potentially could have a 130, 140 move to the uh, to the downside. So we'll have to kind of watch that and see how that you know kind of plays itself out. But those are that was our thinking for this week. And I'm I'm pretty happy with with how it's played out. Um, I do want to stay away from um, things that are heavily shorted right now because I am really concerned about any, you know, a positive day where we get a rip. I mean, obviously we had that on Wednesday. And it was the best single day since uh, June of 2020. So something you need to be concerned about is try and find stocks that are not heavily shorted if you're going to be shorting stuff. Yes, that's gospel. Uh, okay, so let's do this. Let's um, let's take some uh, questions. Uh, okay, ARK, A-R-K-K. -K. This does not have uh, the tech rank. Uh, but we can just kind of get a little look at it. Ugly. <laughs> I'll, let, yeah. I'll, I'll let you comment, Tom. Well, one thing it's the short interest went up a little bit recently, but it's not that shorted. And the other thing that's interesting is the um, option rank right in the middle there is at 50%. And I've, you know, when you see the green dots, those are the Kathy Wood disciples that are coming in to try and buy the buy calls or excuse me buy puts um at these at, at the lows actually and the the red dots are the call buyers sorry i'm kind of one only one cup of coffee today so when you see those those red dots that's the call buyers and you can basically fade those and so yeah i just don't you know i mean actually i did get some demark signals recently um the one issue i do have is that their largest holding tesla has been the only thing that's held up relatively um, and i think that i mean it's gone down obviously but not like some of the others so i think that's my big risk as far as um you know trying to go long this i've seen a lot of people that try to be smart and go long this so and we can talk about tesla here oh uh, so i think so Tom, right Tom, Tom, before, you, before you do that i want to show everyone this um screen let's see if i can get this thing to come up um so we do kind of a fun um, screen on ARC every week. And. Oh God, a lot of downtrends. Yeah. I mean, like here's, here's the problem that, um, that I'm seeing here. There's another way I can look at it in a second. I'll look at it that way too, but look at this. Like there are, um, let's see how many names do I have? Am I beyond 50? Okay, yeah, 51. So basically we're there. And that thing doesn't even exist anymore. So look at this. Like if we look at stocks with positive volume, there are only um, eight names with positive volume out of 50. <laughs> and what's, 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 what's really interesting is one thing we've been talking a lot about is bias. 
And um, if you look at the monthly basis, there are only um, nine stocks that, th only three stocks that are above their monthly DMA channel, uh, another uh, four that are in it, and then two that are below it. And then everything else is below it, inside from below. Sorry, those are starting to improve, but this looks, uh, this looks pretty, pretty awful. For, so in the coming in the coming months or weeks, whenever we, our next uh, one, we should take a look at this and see if there's any improvement there. Yeah, okay. hang on. there's another there's another way I do this. I just wanted to show it, but the the point I want to make though is um, I'm pretty sure I have this on here. Let's see, Ark Invest. I think yeah, this is how Jack set this one up. Okay, perfect, 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 perfect. This will load. Um, so let's go to. Yeah, so here's the current listing through like a week ago. And what's interesting is if I sort by the short intensity, we're starting to see that there are a bunch of names that are starting to become shorted um, because by the purple, 100% is the highest level short selling. And so you can see um, we've got a, a fair number of, of names now. We're down. Can you click, the, click on S, the option rank? Can I call them? Yeah. So these, when you see the um, green here, that means there's a lot of put activity. I just bought a uh, Roblox. Okay. <laughs> I know. Um, at the lows here. So I'm not, you know, I'm looking at it going, okay, fine. I, I'm going to try and get a squeeze out of it. Yeah, you're playing uh, for a book squeeze. You know, what, you know what you're playing it for, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I like okay. this. This is, to me, Zoom is actually kind of getting interesting because the short, let's go back and just take a look at this, then we'll, we'll do ideas. But okay. look, at, look at this. this. This thing is starting to get really shorted now. And uh, it's got the excess puts as well. Um, but you can see one thing we like relative strength. It hasn't turned yet against the S&P. It hasn't turned against the sector software and it hasn't turned against the group, internet software and services. Um, one thing I do want to look at as well, which we talk about a little bit in here is, we don't have, yeah, this is not, this is not useful because yeah, we, only, we only it's have three years. All from the pandemic. Yeah. So that, that could be an interesting name at a hundred, like is, does it bounce off of that? But you can see the moving averages are much, much higher here on this thing for right now. Um, so Tom, you want to do some names? Yeah. Uh, let's get, look, uh, pull up. Um, did we do Amgen? I'm sorry. If I'm... No, we didn't. Okay. Yeah. That's the one I, I saw. Big spike in short interest. Come on. Uh oh. <laughs> Screen sharing is stopped and the shared window is closed. Okay. Let's see if we can get back to that. Let me go back to that screen. I need I to pull mine. I can pull mine up as well. Uh, I should be able to get it up. It should be able to come up because I've got I've got real time. So let's just see here if I can get this up. Here we go. Okay, so now let's go back to the webinar and we're gonna share, come on. Why My TV it... people. Yeah, I don't see the, um... let's try. I can do mine. Oh, here we go. I can do it from okay. here. Now, can you see, can you see chart room now? Yep. Okay, great. It was Go back. Good. Okay. Amgen. I mean, what's that? that I don't know. I gotta, I see if there was some type of offering or something done on, on this, that might be, you know what? They could have done an instant buyback. Um, that a lot of times that happens. And, and by the way, that's the stupidest thing that any company should ever do is to do an instant buyback. All you need to do is announce you're doing a buyback and, then that gets the effect, especially there are people short, but to do it, I guess they thought there was a better value up here than there was down here. So who knows? Apparently. But but okay, yeah. Um, I, have I, have, I have some more. Okay. I have more. Okay. Um, let's just bang through the um, spy Q and IWM because everybody always wants to know those. Nothing really going on there except puts. The puts are high. I mean, you see the shorts, the shorts have increased. Yeah. You know, there's some there's they're moving up a little bit. The puts aren't really that dramatic. Yeah. It's going to take a little time, but look, you do have the seasonality that starts to get a little better. Oh, seasonality. That was the, that was the chart of the week last week in the weekly report. We start on spy. Just we're there. 
I mean, we started a seasonal run that lasts into May now. So, um, and there's a high correlation. It's, it's 0 0.75. One is a perfect correlation. Zero is flat. And then minus one would be an inverse correlation. And okay, go to, go to 2008. Just click on 2008. So that doesn't really have a correlation. No, it's, uh, it's bias. There's positive bias. It was, it was a slight up move. It wasn't huge. Okay. It was, it was then, okay. Uh, click on 11. Cause that was another crazy time. Yeah. Kind of, kind of moved up during that time period. And yeah. then really the damage in both those years were the second half of the year. That's where the damage occurred. Okay. Let's go to. And even, even look at uh, 18. That's where the, I mean, obviously the damage occurred in uh, so, uh, kind of fourth quarter of that year. Let's go to uh, the cues, please. And if anyone has any questions uh, after this, they can always uh, reach out to me, uh, info at Hedge Fund Telemetry, and I can get back to you. And if you want to take a trial of Jeff's work, Erlinger Research, uh, I can put you in touch with Jeff as well. Yeah, and you can hit me on Bloomberg too. So it's Jeff with a G, G-E-O-F-F, -F, and then Garbass. Just hit me on Bloomberg as well. Okay. All right. Uh, Q's, yeah, not much change with i mean maybe the short ratio has gone down because volume's gone up so much yeah it did get a little drop i mean you can see there was the yeah. absolute dropped a little bit but yeah nothing 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 terrific um the one that's Let's look, go, this, oh, no i want to okay sorry i, I, I want to blast through these because we're running a little late people are shorting mid cap since december you can see like here's here's where we were and then you can see how it's been moving up and now the short intensity is 61 percent. so people are definitely shorting mid cap Okay, uh, let's go let, pull up a couple energy. Let's look at, uh, are there any energy names that just jump out like big cap names? Like let, pull up Exxon, please. Come on. Shorts ran away. <laughs> yeah, I, I shorted this um, recently when I saw the, the red dots there, the call buying at the top. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I and I covered it just you know quick little wise guy trade. Look at that! Look at look how the call activity. I mean, it's just yeah. been ridiculous. I mean, that that has a Demark thirteen on on there as well. Chevron recently. Okay, so we have that now. Let's look at SLB. Let's look at a driller. Eh, not much. Not many people are short here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on. SOFI, S-O-F-I. A lot of shorts, making money. You know, yeah, the one this, thing you can see they started, they started shorting back here at 15. Yeah, there are times where you'll see heavy put activity or heavy shorting and the shorts can be right. That's the type three. Yeah. And we've seen that. That's, it's been a very high type three type of market. Let's look at Ralph Lauren, please, RL. God, Nothing. Yeah, there, I, I think that, I mean, I'm, I'm long this and I think their, their drop was a little overdone considering they were worried about Europe and Ralph Lauren doesn't do that much in Eastern Europe. So I'm not too worried about this one. I think they're gonna get bought. Um, I haven't looked at that's my speculation. Uh, Ralph Lauren uh, will sell out. He's 82. I like this. I'm a, I'm a fan of this one. I've just been watching. Yeah, this I was looking at it too. The shorts, the shorts are adding to it and it's building a base. It's building a nice base right around 300. So uh, to me, that's like get above 300. That's a good entry point. And I can always use that to stop myself out or I could write a put there or, or I could write a higher call. But I, I think this will get going um, seasonally. It's kind of interesting. Look at this. We are like, this is like the S&P. This rips. This is actually the best period on a, uh, on a change over change basis. The slope, it's, it's the fastest increase in slope that's it's about to come, you know? So that's, that's kind of an interesting name. I'm just going to look at it on my, where's my, ooh. 
I'm looking for my my charts. Let's see. Uh, yeah, still struggling. I mean, there's been some exhaustion signals back in er in late February, but we just haven't been able to get above the 20 day moving average. And that's kind of one thing I'm, I'm watching. Uh, let's look at uh, DoorDash. This was one I was short. I covered it too early, but still made 40%. <laughs> Maybe it gets something going here with it uh, to the upside, but it's still pretty weak. Yeah, that this was, uh, if you go back to November, when this thing started to spike, there was a lot of call activity. And that was a concern of mine that it just, it, I mean, I, I was paired up with FedEx. Could you do FedEx, by the way? I'm long FedEx and I was looking at this. It's not very short, it's not shorted, but, um, UPS is it has a fair amount of shorts in this, so I think this the group could be um, interesting. That that's a big spike. In yeah. The last. yeah. So that's that's a new type one, and there's put activity in there as well. So that's one thing. Uh, let's go to um, micro strategy MSTR, please. Mr. Sailor. <laughs> yeah. Drunken sailor. I mean, it kind of looks like, you know, Bitcoin just basing here. Yeah. Oh, so let's just take, you mentioned Bitcoin. I'll show you something really cool. But it's like, it's my favorite correlation on Bitcoin to gold. It's done really well. So the whole idea is to look at the relationship between um, Bitcoin and gold. And then we do it in this chart. And when it's moving lower, uh, Bitcoin is underperforming gold. It outperformed just this little move right here. We got the beginning of February, then it gave it up. Did it for like a couple of days there. It gave it up again, but it's just not getting going. Like usually when it when it works, that's a buy signal on Bitcoin right there. That was a buy signal there. It usually works for a pretty decent period of time or it underperforms like this for, we're getting a lot of chop right now in uh, in Bitcoin. So that's my comment on Bitcoin. Right. Uh, Palantir, PLTR, which is one I recently bought. Oh, I got to go back to here. Shorts are there. <laughs> you, can yeah, but that's, you can definitely start a squeeze. The one thing also is it's trying to get above the DMA channel. Mm -hmm. Well, Tom, look over here in the lower right. Um, it's about can, to start to blow that up for everyone. Yeah. So the relative strength here, let me just make it a little bigger for everyone to see. Yeah. That that's a buy signal right there. And this is almost a buy signal. So it's trying to, trying to get going against the sector and against the group. So interesting to see. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to, um, uranium stuff. CCJ and URA. I think we looked at this last time. Looks good. It's just it's just a type two. It's recognized strength. No one's really short it. Yeah, there's no there's no put Next. activity. It's dropping. Let's look over here. Oh, look at this. So Tom, this is kind of interesting. So um, when we go to the volume tab and we look here, we got th this kind of confirmed. We got a couple of, of divergences. The machine actually knows how to create divergences. Um, so that was a negative divergence. That was a positive divergence, like right at the at the low on that. So nothing, nothing right now indicating a peak um, where it can. You can see back there, it did it on the loose and on the tight, um, mm -hmm. and then it was the peak right there. But so far, it looks it looks pretty good. I don't have a uh, I don't have a problem with it at all. Can you look at uranium? The UR uh, what is it? The URA. Shorts covered. Yeah, I was I was long this and I, I got out, you know, made money, but I got out a little early. So I'd like to get that again. Can we look at uh, XLF? We kind of looked at JP Morgan, but uh, yeah, very similar. A lot of uh, option rank that is high. Put activity, shorts aren't really that active. Yeah, it's hard to get better. Just to, just to go here real quickly, if you go to Diversified Financials, just to show people, like if you look at what's the most shorted, it's it's not a lot of well-known names. I was looking at it and I was like, oh my God, it's like, 
it's it's like the secondary and the tertiary stocks that are showing up uh with yeah. the shorts the only the only bigger name is info um that's kind of it you know mm -hmm. okay sd lauder el shorts are there i'm i just started buying this one yeah i think that the, the, this one's been beat down pretty hard it and looks almost identical to iff by the way the charts are like pretty pretty identical mm -hmm. okay moving on um let's see a-t-e-r i don't know what that one is but... i don't know what that is either it's a penny stock yeah <laughs> no, thank you. Um, the only thing that's interesting is it's got excess call activity at a low. So who let, knows? Maybe the let me, um, I'm not, we're not going to do the cannabis stuff because it's not really, it, it, it's, the data's not great there. Uh, can we look at Square? A couple of names. Um, shorts are covering a bit. Are they covered on that spike? It's still a lot, still a fair number of shorts though, because it's still four days and change to cover. So yeah. let's look at PayPal. It's another <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, nothing exciting. There's Visa. Shorts are starting to come into Visa a little bit. Yeah, that's interesting. Not as much in, in MasterCard. Oh, uh, did we do Roblox, RBLX? Yeah, they're, they're in, by the way, they're in, and when the credit card guys, Discover uh, has good shorts in it. You know, this one just needs a, a little bit of a spark here. And uh, I think that last spike in the short interest, I think is going to be interesting to watch. This is an interesting one. People, people, people got nailed in this one. Yeah. Like, um, if it gets through 200, watch out. And it'll be interesting to see if people, when we get the next numbers, this will be an interesting one to see if people covered. Let's look at uh, DocuSign because that one blew up. Let's see if uh, DUC, yeah, Do, yeah, DOC. Shorts have been right. Yeah. But not a lot of put activity going into this number. No, not into the not into the earnings. Nope, not at all. You know, we've just seen a lot of these names. These names that did so well gap down, and then they gap down again. I mean, there's just a, it's like it's contagious. They just keep doing it. Uh, a mosaic, M O S, and people are short. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one on the screen uh, earlier, and that's what um, I want to mention. Uh, Roku. Another one I, I covered too soon. Yeah, shorts have been right again on that one. Mm -hmm. Kathy Wood has been, she buys it, sells it, buys it, sells it every other day. Okay, let's look at a couple airlines. DAL, Delta. Not that exciting. No. Nope. Uh -huh. DAL. They both do have the excess puts though. The puts are definitely. Um, yeah. I, I've been buying airlines uh, partly because a 30% drop on the jet fuel. I think uh, we're going to see some bounces here. I like that one. Yeah. That looks a little better. I'm, I'm long that one too. Uh, let's go to something interesting. Okay, let's do a tech name. NVIDIA. nothing just to put squeeze yeah this has not had any shorts involved but uh yeah this is a one i think from put squeeze that's partly why i'm playing it uh let's and look oracle. at yeah oracles oracles kind of to me like dead money you know it's um the put squeeze is kind of over now that existed in it and there's just no one short it yeah, it's interesting it's uh their guidance was okay. They they raised guidance last quarter, and then they missed the metrics, and then raised guidance again. You got, you got that divergence 
boom, boom. And that was the peak. How about uh, Facebook or Meta? There's, there's shorts involved here, yeah. but, and put, put activity. Just looks awful. Horrible March for uh, seasonality. April is when it really improves. If we, uh, if we look at that, you can see that. Let's look at Apple, please. Look at that. Wow. So that's, that's the seasonality of Facebook. If we can get into April, you can own it in the, in the fall. That's a tremendous. Yeah. That's not a gain of a hundred percent. That's just it, the likelihood that it goes up. Correct. 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 So if people aren't, you know, a little too. Okay. Uh, let's look at yum, please. Not that great. Yeah, I, I bought this one because I saw the, the puts just spiked on this one. Yep. Need some work. Need some work. Restaurants just look, I mean, they got, I mean, I, I made a bet two weeks ago on Chewy. That didn't work. That's kind of struggle. Uh, Texas Roadhouse uh, struggle. I mean, all these, all these things are coming apart because of um, the increased costs of, uh, you know, gasoline. Yeah. Very, very obvious. Uh, Apple, please. Did it, do we do that or let's do some mega cap here? Oh, here's 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 an interesting one for people to watch though. Um, it's it's Midwest, so I know it really well. Portillos, they they kill, anyone who's around Chicago knows Portillos. They do uh, hot dogs, but they also do hamburgers, and they're the line is out the door. I mean, it's it's like to get food from them. It's 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 more successful than uh, uh, In and Out is, Tom. So if you don't know Portillo's, this is one to watch. And it's evolving into a big squeeze. It's over eight days to cover. Wow. And a lot of call, call buying now to offset it. Yeah. Uh, wait, did, did we do Apple? Let's do no. Apple. It's about to get a big test soon, the 200 day. We're coming close to that 200 day. Yeah, and there, there are people buying puts in this thing. And, and I mean, the shorts have never been that active in this. so. Let's see if that, see what happens there. You know, I have no, no position. In this. So here's what's interesting about Apple. If you, I, I do this from Schwab. I look every day at the most active uh, options and um, Spy and the Qs are there and Apple's there too. The, the, the uh, individual trader is so active and Apple puts in calls. It's crazy. And Tom, to that point, let's let's mm -hmm. look at Amazon, let's look at Amazon because Amazon is about to become the most active um, option because it's you know doing the split. It's going to be like a twenty dollars stock, so uh, it's it's going to trade. Oh, it's going to be a hundred and fifty dollars stock. Oh, it's hundred fifty. Okay, but it's going to become very active in terms of the options. Yeah, Jeff Bezos is going to have a billion shares. <laughs> every every point is a billion dollars uh, i listened to uh, one of my favorite people to listen to is thomas petterfee and uh, he was talking about um that that might have an increase to their revenues of like two or three percent just because oh, yeah. of we're going to be trading amazon well that's what i i um i tweeted out saying that this is like a gift to the sell side institutional trader because they've complained for years that all these you know stocks that are in the thousands they get these small, tiny little orders for a hundred shares. And, uh, it, you know, it's, it's great for the investor because it's easy to move shares. Um, you don't have lower commission costs as well. Okay. So let's, um, I, looking at this market, looks like it's starting to fall apart here. So yeah, here, uh, just, I'm gonna, just, a quick, just a quick look on our intraday. Like this is kind of fun to look at. Um, I'm going to make it a full screen. So let's just look at SPY. This is this is done really well. Um, oh, we looked at a fair number of stocks. Here we go. So here's what's going on today. Uh, here's where the day started. And then right at the open, we established this red line, which is resistance, which failed by the time we got to 10 o'clock. And um, down here is pivot. And then that's what support is for the day. But we're also big fans of, of intraday lines. So this is the 30-minute uh, high and the five-minute high. There's a five-minute low, that red dash. 30-minute low down there, one-hour low. We, 
and so the one hour low is kind of really important right now. And we'll see if we can hold it at uh, 424.85. Um, if we don't, then we'll we probably come back down. But it, it's been a very technical market um, in terms of how things have been uh, have been trading. Um, and you can just see it every day. Like we hit level. Now, this obviously, this is the sport line for today, not yesterday. But yesterday was a good example of that. Um, I think I did five trades when normally I do one or two just because we were just hitting lines left and right yesterday. And there's Q. Okay. Well, listen, I, um, I've got to get back to work. So do you, and I just want to say thank you to everyone. I'm sorry that we didn't get to everybody's idea. If you really need to know, you can call me or email me and I'll send you a chart. And I just want to say, thanks, Jeff. Uh, it's thanks, been an interesting market. And, um, I'll let everyone go. Have a great day. Yeah, have a good weekend. See ya. Take care.